thank you lord in jesus mighty name we worship hallelujah somebody give a shout to the lord let me look at your neighbor with an attitude and tell your neighbor i'm excited this morning what about you let me tell your neighbor the joy of the lord is my strength ask your neighbor do you have some joy in the house this morning are you joyful in the lord this morning hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. somebody shout amen glory let me tell you something it's in the atmosphere of joy that things get done it's in an atmosphere of joy that the spirit of miracle is released it's in an atmosphere of joy that god begins to move like never before so i don't care what has happened in the past week or two weeks or three weeks or one month or two months or three months i care about this moment whether the devil like it or yes god is reaching me this morning i'm getting blessed this morning oh my 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 nothing is going to steal my joy nothing will steal my joy this morning i got joy in the holy ghost Woo! hallelujah amen to jesus what you need to understand is that god wants you joyful all the time the devil wants you depressed all the time so who are you going to follow i'm going to be joyful all the time the Bible never says I won't be troubled. He said I will be troubled. He said, but in the midst of the trouble, I've overcome the world and you're going to have a victory. But what I need to obtain my victory, God wants an attitude of joy. Doesn't want me looking morose and looking sad and looking despondent and depressed. Come on, tell anybody I have joy. This morning, very quickly, along the line of what we'll be looking at, pursue, overtake, and recover. I want to speak to us on the futility of life without God. The futility of life without God. The fact that without God, life is meaningless. Without God, life is useless. Without God, there's hardly any significant thing that can be done or achieved. Uh, a lot of people in their pursuit for happiness, they exclude God only to find out that at the end of the day it doesn't make a meaning but most of the time it's usually too late age-wise uh so by that time there is no strength to do what they should have done the bible says the glory of young men is in their strength and the glory of old men is in their gray hair is in their wisdom so the young man has strength but there's no wisdom to augment the strength so by the time he's old and there's no strength he's now wise but now there's no strength to execute the wisdom well, thank God because the Bible says there's a spirit in man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So we're looking at the life of Solomon this morning. Because Solomon exemplified the pursuit of some of these things I want to talk about this morning. And then we'll also look at the conclusions of Solomon. And we look at the conclusion of, of the scripture. And this is because some of the things we'll mention are the things we pursue. And they are the distractions of life at different degree of... Um, uh, life might have find ourselves so let's let's start with this let's look at solomon uh how he actually went into what i call a research about life in ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 12 to 13 i'll begin from, i'm going to read a lot of scripture okay ecclesiastes 1 12 to 13 says amplified i the preacher have been king over israel in jerusalem verse 13 and i applied myself by heart and mind to seek and search out by human wisdom all human activity under heaven and then he says it is a miserable business which god has given to the sons of man with which to busy themselves now ecclesiastes 1 16 to 17 amplified version says i entered into counsel with my own mind say please roll these scriptures okay i entered into counsel with my own mind saying behold i have acquired great human wisdom 
yes more than all who have been over Jerusalem before me and my mind has had great experience of moral wisdom and scientific knowledge look Solomon was saying here that look when it comes to research about life just go and sit down I've done it when it comes to science psychology philosophy you know before they call somebody the wisest man on the planet as Solomon is the kind of person you can ask him any question mathematics English science philosophy art he will give you an answer because he's the wisest man on the planet earth some of the people we see as very intelligent they have great IQ Albert Einstein all of them they are not one over hundred of Solomon Solomon was brilliant he was explosive he had he res- I'm going to show you from the scripture how he researched everything about life and you're going to see his conclusion so now you need to value the conclusion of the wisest man on the planet earth and this is what I'm showing us this morning verse 17 of Amplified he says and I gave my mind to no practical wisdom listen and to discern the character of madness and folly in which men seem to find satisfaction I perceive that this also is a searching after wind and a feeding on it this guy did not just study intelligence he said he studied the character of madness character of foolishness in the message translation of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 12 he says and then I took a hard look at what is smart and what is stupid what is left to do after you've been king that's a hard act to follow you just do what you can and that's it he got to a time he was even tired of all the researches in Ecclesiastes 7 25 Ecclesiastes 7 verse 25 message translation look at it he said I concentrated with all my might studying and exploring and seeking wisdom the meaning of life I also wanted to identify evil and stupidity foolishness and craziness look Solomon studied everything about being a good man being a bad man being a man in the occult being a yahoo guy being a christian being a child of god being an uh, an abonim everything you can think of craziness stupidity foolishness evil he studied everything that's what solomon did if the if there were all those the demonic book seven book of moses or what they call it if they were dead then he must have read it he researched everything possible because he had the capacity to i want you to follow me this morning in ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 9 contemporary english version it says i noticed all this and i thought seriously about what goes on in the world why does one person have power to hurt another look at what he was even trying to study after i studied everything why is it that uh somebody can can uh, decide to come and steal african men and make them slaves and all their lives they are slaves and they are punished and they are you know badly dealt with and then they give birth i mean slaves married give birth and then their children are slaves why is it like that why is it that a fellow man is hurting another man he studied all of that so what Solomon actually did was that he, he experimented with his own life when he was studying this thing he didn't do theoretical study practical and I'm going to show you to show you how the extent to which he went and all his conclusions he experimented with his own life he tried every kind of pleasure the best of the food and drink in this world he tried them the best of music and entertainment if solomon were alive today he would have called justin bieber michael jackson when he was alive yeah, he would have called all of, the, all of them personally to his palace to come and perform for him that was the kind of person he was he, he had the finest material good the best of the best you can think of solomon had the most beautiful men in the entirety of the world if Solomon were alive today, 
everybody that won Miss World, he will marry them instantly. That's the kind of person he was. He, he wasn't he wasn't studying afar off. He was studying in a practical sense. He was an insatiable person. Before you can have a thousand women in your house, thousand, seven hundred wives, three hundred concubines. So after having wives, he said, "Okay, what will it feel like to have concubines?" To have side cheeks, main cheeks, their upper cheeks. He had all of them. He pursued happiness in whatever conceivable way you can think. And then in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1, in message translation, he says, I said to myself, let's go for it. Let's experiment with pleasure. Let's have a good time. But there was nothing to it, nothing but smoke. Solomon, look, think of the greatest pleasure ever you can think of in this world. Solomon had it. Women, wine, music, gold, money. Solomon will import oriental dancers to come to his palace and will host them for months to be performing every day. The greatest of all the pleasures, that guy had it. You do you know what pleasure is? Just because you open one wine. You say me, I have I've had about eleven girlfriends. Go and sit down. Listen to Solomon. Eleven girlfriends. Or twenty girlfriends. You you don't know what we're talking. Solomon had a thousand women. So if Solomon were to ask each woman to come to at his chamber daily. Eh? So if somebody comes today, in the next three years, that's when you pick your tally again. Let's look at the scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 3. Good news Bible. It says, Driven on by my desire for wisdom, I decided to cheer myself up with wine and have a good time. So I'm talking about wine now. I thought that this might be the best way people can spend their short lives on earth. So Solomon drank wine. He got drunk. He went for the best of the wine. You know there are some wines that cost millions of pounds, of dollars. They give you a small cup like this and say one million dollars. Exotic wines, rare wines. Solomon had all of them. But what did he see at the end of the day? In Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1, he says, wine is a mocker. That's his conclusion. Strong drink is raging. Look, believe, believe Solomon. Solomon is not the, is not the type of roadside smanov. What's that? I'm talking of the best of wines. He said he's a mocker. That's his conclusion. So, if you are still given to wine in any capacity, Solomon says you are looking for mockery in your life. I didn't say that. The wisest man said that. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not what? He's not wise. God asks us to pursue, overtake, and recover this year, and then you go and get drunk. How do you pursue? They say wrong. They say wrong. You are, you are drunk. In the Good News Bible of Proverbs twenty-one, he says, "Drinking too much makes you loud and foolish. It's stupid to get drunk." And then in Proverbs twenty-three twenty-nine to thirty, he says, "Show me people who drink too much who have to try out fancy drinks." And I will show you people who are miserable and sorry for themselves. Always causing trouble and always complaining. Their eyes are bloodshot and they have bruises that could have been avoided. Come on, say, come on, say with me, wine is not it. Uh, wine is not it. The sober conclusion is that alcohol does not deliver the happiness or the joy that it seems to promise. It gives you a temporary relief in your body system. But after that, it begins to mock you. Find yourself drunk and sleeping in the gutter. Find yourself doing embarrassing stuff. Let's go to women. 
Let's leave wine alone. WW. Why? 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 Women. How many gay friends have you ever had as an unbeliever? Or even now? How many? Let's say roughly 100. You are not really doing well. Solomon had a thousand women. One thousand. So imagine this number of women. Just, just this. To one man. How was he coping? And you know each woman with her issues. Women are deep. I hope you know that. And women should be respected. Jesus respected women a lot. Even angels respected women. The angel came to Mary. He said, you're going to conceive. You're going to have a son. Mary said, how shall this thing be? He said, the power of God will overshadow you. He began to explain. He began to break it down, analyze. He went to Zechariah. The angel said, your, your wife is going, to, is going to conceive. Zechariah said, how shall this thing be? He struck him deaf and dumb. Deaf and dumb. Every woman Jesus healed in the Bible, he touched them. Check your Bible. Go and read. He touched them. Amen. Go and show yourself to the priest. Go back to your friends. <laughs> Praise God. Let me tell you about respect women. If you don't respect women, your wife will teach you yes. I'm just telling you respect women. There are only two people referred to as the helper in the Bible. The Holy Spirit and your wife. No other person. So Solomon had a thousand women. But they didn't bring him happiness and contentment. Let's check the scripture. First King chapter 11. And I'll read from verse 1. Read a couple of verses. So I'm going to be fast. Long verses. Just follow on the media. On the screen rather. King Solomon. I'm reading message translation. King Solomon was obsessed with women. Pharaoh's daughter was only the first of the many foreign women he loved. He loved the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Sidonians, the Hittites. Verse 2. He took them from the surrounding pagan nations of which God had clearly warned Israel. You must not marry them. They'll seduce you into infatuations with their God. Solomon fell in love with them anyway. Refusing to give them up. Verse 3. He had 700 royal wives and 300 concubines. A thousand women in all. And they did seduce him away from... I mean, 1,000 women, they will seduce you. Verse 4. As Solomon grew older, his wives beguiled him with their alien gods and he became unfaithful. He didn't stay true to his God as his father David had done. Verse 5. Solomon took up Ashtoreth, the all goddess of the Sidonians and Molech, the horrible god of the Ammonites. Solomon openly defied God. He did not follow in his father's David's footsteps. He went on to build a sacred shrine to Chemosh, the horrible god of Moab, and to Molech, the horrible god of the Ammonites on a hill just east of Jerusalem. Verse 8, he built similar shrines for all his foreign wives who then polluted the countryside with the smoke and stench of their sacrifices. I mean, you could come into Jerusalem and you will see sacrifices all over the place. In a thousand places, the women of the king. And you dare not speak against the queens of the king. So can you imagine a thousand women scheming to have first place with Solomon? Because part of their sacrifice is to be number one. I'm the one that the king will call this week. You are not the one, the one. It was, it was a bad situation for him. What was the conclusion of Solomon? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 26. Look at what he says there. He says, a woman can be a bitter pill to swallow. That's Solomon. No? He didn't say women. No, He had 1,000. He said a woman. He said, I'm warning you. <laughs> he was trying to say, don't follow my footsteps. A woman can be a bitter pit to swallow, full of seductive scheming and grasping. The lucky escape are the undiscerning get caught. He said, How is that possible? Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man. Samson was the strongest man ever to live on this planet Earth. Solomon, they tried to block him in a particular city. He carried 
the gate of the city. Not the gate of your compound. Do you understand what I'm saying? The gate of the city. Do you know how massive it is? You know how some of those uh, estates where they build massive gates. The gate of the city. City gate. He carried it and walked uphill for three miles to go and deposit their gates there. That's how strong he was. Solomon with the jawbone of an ass murdered a thousand men. Those men had swords, arrows, javelins, jawbone of, of an ass. Killed all of them. It was powerful. But one woman, come and say one woman, named Delilah, brought an end to his life and destiny. Terminated his ministry. Ended his sojourn on the planet Earth. Just one woman. Just one woman. Happiness cannot be found in sleeping around. It may give you temporary relief. You have an orgasmic experience, and that's it. Next two hours, you are dull. Back to misery. Because that is not the design of God in pursuit of fulfillment and happiness for your life. As are you still with me? Solomon had all of them the fat, the slim, the tall, the short, the dark, the light in complexion, the horrible, the leper, the not too tall, not too short, not too dark, not too yellow, the yellowish, the green, the all of them had them. And Solomon's dealings were with beautiful women, not just anybody. Yet he said the woman can be a better pill to swallow. Let's move to music. 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible says there, Solomon speaking, he says, I piled up silver and gold, loot from kings and kingdoms. I gathered a chorus of singers to entertain me with song. And most exquisite of all pleasures, voluptuous maidens for my bed. Solomon was it the time that we put on the stereo to listen to music. No, he will import them. When he hears that there's this particular uh, person who just released a song, he's in the United States, he's, I mean, his album has sold one million, he said, eh, go and bring him. Take, take presidential jet, go and bring him to the father. Let's come and perform for me. That's the kind of person he was. Choirs, he will bring them. Because he had what you can call stupid money. Solomon had money. Had money. In his days, gold became common. That's how the Bible puts it. So he explored the world of music, the world of entertainment, its futility. No, no, no. Uh, I, I cannot do without going to club. What's club now? Go and see what Solomon did. There was club in his palace, different kinds: African club, American club, Brazilian club, music and entertainment was going on every day are you still with me that's Solomon for you I'm watching my time look at what somebody said about music in 2nd Samuel 1935 that's after growing old message translation 2nd Samuel 1935 he said I'm 80 years old I mean you should respect an 80 year old man he said I'm not much good anymore anymore to anyone I can't taste food I can't hear music so why add to the burdens of my master the king so you get to a certain age in life you can music is nothing again are you here with me what about money what about money if you think pursuit of money will bring you joy and happiness it's a lie i want if i can just have that one million don't pray that kind of prayer to god if i can just have that one million oh lord that's all that's all i need if you have one million, you discover that's the least you need. Then you, you just say, God, I made a mistake the other time. Please, if I can just have 10 million now. So you have 10 million. Say, actually, God, I'm, I'm revising the vision and agreement. Because the more you have, the more you want to have more. Do you think that good is sleeping? Richest black man. He doesn't sleep. He's trying to make more money. Trying to devise more ways. 
the more money you have the more you want to have more are you following me stop abusing people that buy a shoe of 100k it's because you don't have the money yet stop abusing them pray that god should bless you is somebody following me you see a final say ah ah I should drive. Is it no house? House that we will leave when Antichrist will come. So you know Antichrist is coming. So why are you walking? <laughs> Stop abusing people. Whatever you abuse, you won't be able to attract. If you see a good car, acknowledge that's a good car right there. Don't say, oh, it's Yahoo Yahoo. Wait, where there is Yahoo Yahoo or Jesus Jesus? Leave that side. Good car is good car. The Bible promises us that we'll be wealthy. What it says is that we should not love money. But the love of money is the root of all evil. God wants you to have money. He doesn't want money to have you. What's the difference? Are you still with me? Now let's look at money here. Second Chronicles 9, 13 to 14 message translation. Solomon received... 25 tons of gold annually think about it 25 tons of gold annually every year if you have little quantity of gold like this do you know how much how wealthy you become when you sell it off tons this was above and beyond the taxes and profit on trade with merchants and traders all the kings of Arabia and various and assorted governors also brought silver and gold to Solomon. But when you see the ogah, you have to be bringing off me. That's what's happening here. Are you following me? Bible issue tells us that the modern day net worth of Solomon was $100 billion. This was as at this fact is about 20 something years ago so think about what it will be like now it was wealthy are you still with me let me show you another scripture here second chronicles 9 beginning from verse 17 message translation he said the king made a massive throne of ivory and a veneer of gold the throne had six steps leading up to it with an attached footstool of gold the armrests on each side were flanked by lions. Lions, 12 of them, were placed at either end of the six steps. There was no throne like it in any other kingdom. King Solomon's chalices and tankards were made of gold. And all the dinnerware and serving utensils in the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Nothing was made of silver. Silver was considered common and cheap in the time of Solomon. A spoon, gold, everything gold. Everything was gold. In Second Chronicles nine twenty two, it says King Solomon was richer and wiser than all the kings of the earth combined. He surpassed them all. In Second Chronicles nine twenty four, everyone who came brought gifts, artifacts of gold and silver, fashionable robes and gowns, the latest in weapons, exotic spices, horses and mules parades of visitors year after year solomon collected horses and chariots he had four thousand stores for horses and chariots twelve thousand horsemen in barracks in the chariot cities and in jerusalem how many horses do you have those horses represent cars exotic cars how many do you have you know that's why you call kaishi are you still with me but what was his conclusion? He said the abundance of the riches he had will not allow him to sleep. Look at Ecclesiastes 5.10. The one who loves money is never satisfied with money. Nor the one who loves wealth with big profits. More smoke. Verse 11. The more loot you get, the more loot has show up. And what is that? What fun is that? To be robbed in broad daylight. Verse 12, hard and honest work earns a good night's sleep, whether supper is beans or stick, but a rich man's belly gives him insomnia. Insomnia is sleeplessness. Verse 13, here's a piece of bad luck I've seen happen. A man holds far more wealth than is good for him. See, all of the pursuit of this thing without God is fertility. The scripture is saying here that, look, if you don't believe money can give you a sleepless night, 
let me give you 10 million around 9 p.m. I said, let me keep it to tomorrow. Will you sleep? I said, please, let me take this bag. Around 10, 30 p.m. In front of your house, let me take this bag. It's about 10.5 million. You trust me as your pastor that I didn't steal it and I'm not a robber and I'm not trying to get you the problem. So you know it's safe money. So take this 10 million. Let me keep it to tomorrow morning. I'll see you tomorrow morning. And then you take the money inside. He won't sleep. Any, any sound you hear, sleep till next day by seven o'clock they say pastor where are you come and collect the money hello somebody some some of you here ordinary 200k say ah, i have to deposit the bank ah no ah no 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 ah no i i, I don't keep money at home ah no <laughs> solomon had all this money in his palace everywhere was money but he concluded that look too much money is in somewhere. Number five, let's look at education. I'm going somewhere and I have 22 minutes more. Education, wisdom, philosophy. Ecclesiastes 1 13, it says, I gave my heart to seek and search out my wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sort travel had God given to the sons of man to be exercised their way. You see, Solomon started out by becoming a great engineer and architect. In Ecclesiastes 12 12, it says, by, but regarding anything beyond this, dear friend, go easy. I'm telling you, but go easy. Ah, go easy. He said, there's no end to the publishing of books and constant study wears you out so you are no good for anything else. He said, you can read to a point. Have you seen some professors? Really, look at education. You go to primary school, you study then secondary school up to class three you study by class four you move to science or art abby so you begin to study lesser things than what you were studying before but actually more in the real sense of it then you get to university then you don't do all the subjects then you are studying one course then you go for masters and you pick an area of your course then you go to phd and pick an even smaller part of what you did at master's level and then you now say you want to write journals and then all those things even smaller parts of that so at the end of the day there's nothing to study again there are advantages to higher education but when academic ed- academic education becomes a substitute for god it causes one not to put god first it becomes evil that's what it says there what about fame and power Ecclesiastes 2 9. Solomon said, I was great and I increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. All my wisdom remained with me. Second Chronicles 9 22. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Combine all the kings of the earth together. Solomon surpassed them. His notoriety and power still did not bring lasting peace because he had to protect his kingdom at all times at the time he even considered assassinating somebody close to him in first kings eleven forty, look at it solomon ordered the assassination of jeroboam but he got away to egypt and found asylum there with king shishak he remained in exile until solomon died with all his education possession wisdom and everything he had in this world he still threatened he was still insecure i mean how can you be that wealthy you had everything, you had all the money, and yet Jeroboam was still a threat. I said, kill him. You see, all of the pursuits we go after in this world without God is futility, it's nothingness. Come on, say nothingness. What about possessions? Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 10. It's for you to have an idea of what the kind of person Solomon is. He said, Whatever my eyes desired. I didn't keep from them. You are just going and you saw one brand new car. He doesn't have to go and price it too. It's his men. Get that. This, they, this gold is everywhere. Maybe he's just going and saw a house. I like that house. Evacuate them. Give them money to go and build another one. That becomes my house. He was that kind of person. Whatever my eyes saw. That was, that was a, he was able to have 1,000 women. You ask how did he toast them? There's no time for toasting. He's just going and he saw one girl. 
And in those days, you dare not refuse a king. Who born you? Who born you? You dare not. If you refuse a king to become his queen, they, they will kill you. You can't survive it. And who doesn't want to be? The old parents want to be King Solomon's in laws. They know it's gold. And you can't visit Solomon in the palace and not go with enough. So when your own daughter is there, it's an opportunity to visit. You just came to see her, though. Thy Excellency, Your Excellency, O King. O King. We are going, O King. We are on our way, O King. <laughs> they, will carry, they will carry your next supply for the next one year after you. Are you following me? Whatever my eyes desire, it was covetous. There was an element of greed there. Anything he saw, took, went for it. And one of the questions you might want to ask, but is the, he was the wisest man. So why was he making all these stupid choices? Remember where we read earlier, when he went for those women, they began to corrupt him. His wisdom became diluted. Foolishness came in and all of that. In Second Chronicles, we understand that he had all kinds of animals. Second Chronicles 9.21 for the king's ships went to Tashish with the servants of Huram. Every three years, once came the ships of Tashish, bringing gold, silver, ivory, and apes and peacocks. The guy had a zoo in the palace. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't go to Solomon's. Solomon, they, when visitors come to Solomon's palace, they spend months. There's food. Food is not your problem. You can just come under the guise of visiting to come and eat for the next three months had all of them, all kind of animals snakes, pythons, lions look at verse 4 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 he says, oh I did great things I built houses and I planted vineyards in verse 5 he says I designed gardens and parks they are talking of uh, farm parks where people can, children can play Solomon had all of them I he was the one that designed them, he was the architect because he was the wisest man. He didn't need anybody to do anything. I designed gardens and parks and planted a variety of fruits, trees in them. You could walk through his garden and you find every kind of fruits in this world there. Verse 6, I made pools of water to irrigate the grooves of trees. Verse 7 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, I brought slaves, male and female, who had children. Eh? Slaves who already had children. I bought them. Bought families. Eh? Families. Is how many of you in your family? Father slave, mother slave. How many children? Ten. Buy all of them. I bought slaves, male and female, who had children, giving me even more slaves. Then I acquired large herds and flocks, larger than any before me in Jerusalem. Just begin to picture Solomon. So, see whatever you are pursuing now that is keeping you busy from serving God you are not doing well compared to Solomon what are you pursuing what? let's assume you are pursuing money 100 million one year what's that to Solomon you are pursuing women what's that to Solomon it's nothing you are pursuing entertainment club drinking having a nice time all of that is nothing Solomon went after all of that in 1st Kings 10 18 19 he made himself an elaborate ivory and gold throne he says moreover the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold now I have 30 minutes more let's get into the conclusions of Solomon in all worldly pursuits, Solomon concludes that all these things, women, wine, possessions, horses, animals, cars, fun, traveling, having nice time, everything is vanity. That's what he said. Solomon used the word vanity 30 times, over 30 times in the book of Ecclesiastes alone. Trying to communicate the disappointment he experienced in all of the pursuits. Let's look at a few of them. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2. He says, vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. 
he wasn't saying an aspect is vanity. He said all, all these things: women, cars, horses, apes, fun, pools, gardens, music, songs, vanity, nothingness. That was his conclusion. They didn't bring him happiness. He was trying to seek happiness. They didn't bring him. In Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 1.14. He said, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. What is your goal in life? What, what do you want? What do you want to achieve? And you want to build 10 houses. You want to uh, buy 55 cars. You want to... Uh, the... Without God is vanity. In God is fulfillment. Without God is vanity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. He said, I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mass." Therefore, enjoy pleasure. Go to club. Enjoy yourself. Have poolside party. Do all of those things. Buy wine. He said, behold, this also is vanity. Ecclesiastes 2.11. He said, I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. He stood one day to look at all the magnificent properties he had acquired. All his gold, all his properties, all his horses, all his women, the building. The palace. He said, and on the labor that I labored to do all my life, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. In verse 21 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he said, what's the point of working your fingers to the bone? If you, hand, if you hand over what you work for to someone who never lifted a finger for you. You remember the rich man that Jesus spoke about in the parable? He said, I've saved all the money. I've acquired everything. Now, let me sit back and enjoy. And God, in that parable, God said, you are dying tomorrow morning. In, the verse, in verse 21 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, message translation. Okay, that's what I just read. He said, what's the point of working your fingers on the bone if you hand over what you work for to someone who never lifted the finger for you? Smoke. That's what it is. A bad business from start to finish. Work and work and work and work and work all your life. Get all the money. You refuse to contribute to God's kingdom. You refuse to serve God with your money. You refuse to serve God with your energy. You just keep on amassing money and then after amassing the money, whew, somebody else comes take over the money. What's the point? That's what Solomon is saying there. He says it's a bad business from the start. Anything you do without God is a bad business. Any project you embark on without God is a bad business. Anything you embark on without God is a bad business from start to finish. Can somebody say amen? Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 4. He says, I have I've also learned why people work so hard to succeed. It is because they envy the things their neighbors have. That's, that's our motivation sometimes. You see your neighbor has this thing. You say, ah, I'm going to get my own. So you start scheming. He said, it is useless. It's like chasing the wind. Because the Bible said they that compare themselves, themselves are fools. They are not wise. In Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 2, a man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor so that he wanted nothing for his soul of all that he desired, yet God gave him not power to eat. But a stranger eat it. This is vanity. It's an evil disease. To have power to get wealth, but there's no power to eat wealth to acquire wealth and then end up with one strange sickness and then the person dies bad business where can we find happiness let's hear it from the mouth of solomon himself ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 to 14 he says let us hear the conclusion of the old matter fear god can you say me fear god and keep his commandments this is the old duty of man for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See if it translation says, everything you were taught can be put into a few words. Respect and obey God. This is what life is all about. God will judge everything we do. Even what is done is secret, whether good or bad the conclusion of the whole matter fear God include him in everything you are doing in your life don't plan your stuff and then find somewhere to squeeze God inside put God at the center and then bring all your stuffs around him is somebody with me in this house 
don't waste your energy in your youthful years. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Concentrate on going after God. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things shall be added. He didn't ask you to seek money first. He didn't ask you to seek sex first. He didn't ask you to seek uh, possession first. Seek God first. All these other things shall be added. The wisest man said, all of this thing is vanity. What he was saying next is, if I had time to live again, I would have prioritize God in my life. Stop saying things like, I, I will serve God when I have time. I will serve God when I finish school. I will serve God. There's no time now. I'm too busy. Busy for what? Busy doing what? There are ways you serve God. You serve God with your life. Your devotional life. Don't be too busy to say a word of prayer and spend time in God's presence before you leave your house. We have an online prayer that holds every day that you can join on audio, Miss LR, or YouTube on video. It will help you to pray. It's just 30 minutes. And after the 30 minutes, you can still pray more if you want. But it's, it's just to help you to jumpstart. Join that program, Oil for Today. Every morning, either myself or Pastor Silver is leading prayer online. Join and be a part of it. Is somebody following me here? You serve him with your life. Number two, you serve him with your time. Find a unit and be and contribute. Do something. Maybe sweep the floor or arrange something or do serve God. Number three, serve God with your money. Whatever your money is not involved in, you don't prioritize that thing. Forget it. The only way you can show you prioritize something is when your money is involved. You say, I respect God. How? By prostrating. No. Through your money. You see a need in church. You meet it. That is the kingdom. And that is how to get blessed in more. You see a need somewhere. You say, Pastor, what? How, how can we fix this? Take that is how to advance your life serve him with your money are you following me here that's number what number four serve him with your heart with your emotions don't serve God haphazardly don't do, do things anyhow concentrate in serving God put your, put your emotional energy into serving God very powerful are you with me here In the book of Exodus, he said, You will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your butter. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. That is the blessing of provision and health coming with service. If you are a part of the house, then you serve in the house in your biological parents house you have to serve in the house it's either you're sweeping the floor or you're washing the plates or you are washing the car everybody asks what it does in the house because family my parents have got to work it's not whether you like it or not no it's just family this is your spiritual family find something to do if you don't know what to do Walk up to the pastors. What can I do? These are my skill set. These are my gifting. These are my natural talents. What can I do? There's something you can do. Start to serve God. Honor God with your time. Honor Him with your energy. I have three minutes more. Honor Him with your tithe and your offerings. Honor Him with your finances. Honor Him in your emotions. Honor Him with your words. Don't speak against God. Don't speak against the pastor. Don't speak against the leaders. Don't indulge in gossip. Don't indulge in hearsay. It's honoring God. Clean your life of everything that will oppose and block the blessings of God in your life. Open up yourself to the blessings.
blessings of the Lord. When God has made up his mind to bless you, he only needs you to cooperate. I've shown you, I've taken time to show you from scriptures. It took me a long time of study to bring all these scriptures together to show you the fertility of running after everything in this world without God. I'm here to challenge you this morning. Shout to Grace Center. Prioritize God in your life. I don't know how stronger to say prioritize God prioritize with your time with your energy with your finances with your heart a double minded man cannot receive anything from God serve him with your whole heart When you do that, you know what's going to happen? God will begin to fight for you. God will begin to make way for you. God will cause his favor to come into your life. God will begin to help you. You see, we are configured to need his help. You can't, you can't, you can't run this race alone. going to be frustrated if you try to do it alone. If you ignore God in your life and you live your life recklessly in disobedience and sinning and I couldn't regret it later. I pray you will not regret in Jesus' name. Stand up on your feet. God to help you to come after him. 